Hi everybody, Elisa here with another Vera Bradley bag of the day, coming to you from unair conditioned New York City. <laughs> so please excuse the sweat. <laughs> um, I thought I would do um, an online outlet sale haul because my stuff came in. Um, I haven't ordered anything from an online outlet sale in a, in a while, but I sure made up for it this time um, <laughs> with multiple orders and the sale is still going on. I mean, I kind of hate it when they do that because every time I can't sleep, I just go online and look at stuff. <laughs> and so the chances that um, I'm going to increase my orders uh, is greater when they extend the sale. <laughs> anyway, there was stuff this time that appealed to me, unfortunately. So here we go. Uh, the first thing is the, this is a kind of Catherine, and I can't remember what this is called, but I think I have the tag here. Yeah. Convertible backpack shoulder bag kind of Catherine. Um, Catherine is a vintage pattern um, that basically looks like this and it had trim. Uh, different trim than this trim. This trim is, you know, sort of uh, the Bloom Boom Navy, taken from Bloom Boom Navy. I mean, I don't think it was used on any Bloom Boom Navy bags, but um, you know, the motifs in here are from Bloom Bloom Navy. Although I do know from looking at vintage stuff online, um, I don't remember the pattern name. I know it's pink. I want to say something pansy, pink pansy. I don't know what the name of the pattern is, but in the trim there are butterflies, I think, that look like this. There may be another vintage pattern that had butterflies in the trim that look like this. So this is sort of harking back to that, which is nice. I like when they sort of do a shout out to their roots a little bit. Um, so this is, I have, I have this bag also in Bloom Boom Navy. I'll have to do a video on Bloom Boom Navy sort of very belatedly. Um, maybe I can tie it in with some more current patterns because there are some other patterns it's related to um, other than just Bloom Boom. Um, so I, I do have another bag in this style, but I mean, and, and I, I, had, I had never used it. I did use it yesterday. It is sort of packed up. So I just left it that way thinking I might do a video. Um, it's not really the style that's driving me so much as the pattern with this wanting this bag. And this bag seemed like for, for a while, I just thought it was almost like a mirage. I was saying in, in one of the Facebook groups I'm in, it's like, like, like an oasis in the desert, you know, sort of out of focus in the distance. I don't know if you're ever gonna reach it. Um, because when they first put this pattern out, the kind of Catherine, there's a duffel in it and a, with a bucket, a small bucket bag, with, which has a piece of trim up across the bottom, which I do have, I should have pulled it out, but uh, another video. <laughs> um, and this was on the website too, and then this one never showed up there. You know, like they had a product shot for it, but it was never available, and then it was just gone. And then I think in the last online outlet sale it showed up, but it sold out super fast. Um, and the same thing seems to have happened here. And I didn't even, you know, it's just dumb luck that I got this this time. I was always searching for it, but I was always, it was never there, or I was always too late. Um, typical. <laughs> and I didn't even get the email for the online outlet sale when it started. I didn't get it right away. Usually I do get it right away, but I didn't get it right away. And I, I was just lucky that I was on Facebook in one of the Vera groups and, and Bev, hi Bev, if you're watching, I don't know if she's watching. <laughs> she had made a post about how she had seen it there and, and she had just scooped it up and I went, you know, crazy running, the equivalent of running <laughs> to the website to order this. I just put in the cart and I checked out. I didn't even look around for anything else. Um, and it was just enough to get the free shipping. It really bugs me that they've 
bumped up the threshold for the free shipping. It used to be $30, now it's $50. Um, I don't like that, but anyway. So you start, you start playing this little game with, with Vera Bradley, even, even on the regular website of like, how can I get free shipping without buying, really buying more than I want to buy? And like, can I just get over the limit? Ha ha, beat you, beat you sucker. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's the heat. <laughs> so, you know, it's this trim, you just wanted the trim. And uh, so I got it, you know, this bag, the straps reconfigure, it, I think it's supposed to be very similar. It seems like Lug and Vera Bradley keep knocking each other off. And I, I'm not enough of a Lug person. I try to like Lug, but I really don't like the Lug bags. Um, and so I don't bother with them anymore. I, I've given up trying. I, I've, I've, I've decided to be, you know, brutally honest with myself and say I don't really like lug bags <laughs> for a number of reasons. Um, but they have something like this. I, I might be called like the zip liner or the, something like that. The zip line. I don't know. But it's this. Looks like a hobo, and then it's got these straps, and they convert into a back. You can reconfigure them. Uh, and the whole thing, you can wear it as a backpack and this kind of, this top kind of cinches up like that, I think, when you do that. I, I'm not really 100% sure, but I'm sure there are pictures on the website, either Vera website or um, the Lug website. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they're still offering it uh, on Lug, but I do know it was a style. I'm sure that you, there are any number of YouTube videos about it. Um, so I, I really don't care about it for that. I'll never use it that way. I haven't even bothered to try to figure out these straps. I wish I could just sort of cut them off, you know, the extra parts, but I can't without it like falling apart. Um, so my concern with a pattern like this, and I was very pleased with it when I unwrapped it, uh, when I opened the bag, was be with, a, with a, re a repetitive pattern like this that's sort of in a grid-like layout. Uh, everything has to be level and s perpendicular, like straight the both ways. If it's a skew, if it's kind of tilted and leaning, then it really, it sort of jumps out at you and it just screams shoddy quality control, shoddy production. And, and it's not, I can't, I can't stand it. And I will return anything that looks crooked. So here I felt really pleased because it didn't look crooked. Using the sides of the strip of trim as a guide sort of you know you can see that the pattern surrounding it is kind of even nicely placed I mean it's not exact the flowers get a little bit closer to the strip there than they are down here that's what kind of what I'm talking about you can see a bigger space here tighter here but it's close enough that it, it's, it's minimal the back is also a little crooked, but it's the back, so I live with it. You know, like I said, I mean, this is just like a, a bag I never thought would exist, so just pleased to have it. But it is crooked. You can tell if you compare the pattern to the straight edge of the top, the zip pocket, there's a zip pocket behind here, and you can tell it's, it's not lining up exactly right. What are you going to do? Anyway. The front of this bag kind of reminds me a little bit of the Morgan, if people remember the Morgan, which has these kind of pockets on one side that, excuse me, sorry, I um, had an accident with my bike yesterday and so I've got some kind of pain when I move my body in certain ways. <laughs> that was just one of the ways. Um, these pockets that kind of look like pockets on a pair of pants or something, um, slip pockets, and they're deep, they go all the way down, down to the bottom, pretty much. Um, so that's nice, I like to drop keys or grocery list or something in there. And the back has this long zipper pocket, you know, the full, takes up the full length and depth, you know, height and, and length crosswise of the bag. So good size. I do think the zipper placement is a little odd. Um, where the pull tie is in the back here because it's at odds with how the pull tie, the zipper pull tie is here for me, for me and my way of thinking, um, which apparently 
runs counter to everybody of your breath. <laughs> so I will carry this bag on my left side and I will get up and show it on. I'm not gonna put it on as a backpack because I have, really haven't figured it out and I'm just not gonna get into it. It's too hot. But I wear it this way because I want the pattern facing out, the, the strip of trim, obviously, the front. This is the front, technically. I want it facing out. But I also want to be able to access the bag easily, the inside. So I want the zipper pull here. If I, you know, if I wear it over here and I try to access the zipper pull, it's all the way back there. So that's, I, I never use it that way. So I have it over here, right? But then when I want to use the, access this zipper pull on the back side of the bag, I have to reach all the way back. You know, it should be here also, so I can pull it easily. So I don't I need to have a discussion with somebody over there about the logic of the zipper placement. <laughs> zipper pull placement. Anyway, um, I don't have my, I meant to get my tape measure out and I don't have it out, but it's a, it's a good size um, bag, a little on the narrow side. Um, slouchy. There's no real base if I remember correctly. I mean, if there's something in there, which there might be a little bit of something in there in the bottom, it's not removable. So I wouldn't hesitate to throw this in the in the laundry. Yeah, there might be a little something in there. I'm not sure what it is. Very soft. Um, so let me just put it. Let me just put it back on my shoulder and go back closer to the fan. <laughs> So people can see what it looks like on. Oh. And excuse, please excuse my clutter and any sweat marks. <laughs> it's hot in here. Again, wearing my baggy pants because it's so hot. So you can see it's a good size. Just like I said, it's not it doesn't have a lot of width here, but it has a nice break here. It breaks nicely here. A ho hobo like kind of look. Very soft, slouchy kind of look. I don't really have a lot in here right now. Um, I just left some stuff in to give it a little body. I did have to, I did downsize a little bit. I was just running to the grocery store, but it did fit all of my bags. I, I, I have this one, which I, I talked about in a couple of videos ago, my love for the Fresh Direct bags, that fit in there, along with two packable totes, which are back over there amongst my clutter. Um, did take this because this, this is a clip, the clip and zip with the Scotty Dog uh, applique of this thing. I have, I have two of these. <laughs> um, because I keep throat lozenges in here. And because of what happened to me yesterday, it hurts when I cough, it hurts when I sneeze. So I didn't want to be stuck out having some kind of coughing fit and being a lot of pain. And I just had, I had this in here, charger cords, ear, ear, phones, uh, sun, sunglass, read, uh, readers case, eyeglass case. And then in the there, there are two, I'll show it, there are two medium size, not, not too humongous slip pockets. Like I can fit my phone in one, but not with a Carson cell phone crossbody around it. Um, and then there's a zipper pocket, and the zipper pocket is where I had my wallet. I'm still using this double zip ID, relatively new item um, as my wallet. I talked about this a couple of videos ago. So you can see the big zipper pocket, very good size, really good size, deep. Not all the way down to bottom, but deep. The little fabric here, a little blousey, you know. So it does, I mentioned that because depending on what you put in the pockets, it pulls the lining down, which can then in turn pull the bag down, depending on how you've packed it up. So just FYI, not, not a huge deal for me. I'm gonna put my, um, phone in a pocket, slip pocket, so you can see. I, iPhone 11. You know, fits right in, but not, I couldn't put the cell phone crossbody in that pocket. 
So, you know, just really pleased to, to finally get this. I mean, it's not, the body pattern isn't something that I, that calls to me strongly. I do think it's dated looking. Um, it's the trim, it's all about the trim and the fact that they used the trim in a sort of fresher, more modern way. So I think that's the, that's the trick, right? With the trim right now is how do we use it to sort of um, honor our past as a brand, but use it in a way that looks modern and doesn't look so dated that it's gonna turn off younger, new customers. So I think vertical strips work well. That's why I'm always saying, put the trim on the Vera back up, running up and down the sides on, on the Vera tote, rather than trying to go back to putting it across the top. You know, there, there was a time for that and that time across the top on a tote and that time is done. <laughs> then I got, um, I feel like I have an endless battle going on with Vera Bradley um, with pattern placement and zip IDs. So I'm always kind of loath to order them, but I can't get to a store. I guess I could call a store, but I'm just too, I don't know, I've really got to be motivated to do that. And the only things that really seem to motivate me lately to do that are the Disney patterns with um, Pluto. A Disney pattern with a dog in it. I will call up Disney Springs at the, at the, you know, even a couple minutes before they open, see if someone will help me pick up pattern placement, <laughs> which is what I did with um, the, the new one that just came out. Um, so. I can do a video on that when that stuff comes. Um, Hedgehog Wild, uh, I, I love this pattern. I, I was a little slow to get going with this pattern um, because the, my initial reaction was, gee, the faces of the hedgehogs don't really uh, read all that well. It's too sketchy. I'm always talking about, like I was talking with plants in, one, in, in a recent video about how they did a good job, just the right, you need just the right amount of line work and color detail, shape detail with the colors to convey what you want without mucking it up. But sometimes you need a little bit more. I mean, there's too minimal. There's something, there's such a thing as too minimal. <laughs> and then stuff isn't really reading so well. And that's kind of how I felt about the faces on these hedgehogs initially. Like I was having trouble making them out. And so these hedgehogs just look kind of look like blobs to me. But I love the background color and I love the overall color palette. Um, God, which reminds me, I didn't, there's one thing in this I didn't pull out, it's in my closet, it's the blanket. Um, I'll, I'll show it another time because I'm just, it's too hot to start over. <laughs> and I'm no good at editing my videos. So, but as I started to, I don't know, they started, the, the various hedgehogs started to grow on me and I am a critter person. So I started to warm to it. And then there must have been a sale or something and I ordered tote and I really like the tote. Um, ordered the totes, I mean, like the tote so much that, that well, you see when I get through the rest of my pile here, <laughs> something weird happened. Anyway, but here it is, nice and close. There's a face there. So, you know, I feel like I ordered one of these before and it's going back because it really, I really just got plunked, this negative space plunked in the middle and no full, not even one full hedgehog. Um, this is not my favorite hedgehog from the thing, but what are you gonna do? At least it's a full hedgehog. So I'll keep this one because I'm just getting tired. I'm getting tired of it. I mean, I feel like other brands can pay attention to pattern placement for things. Um, it's a little frustrating, the brands that don't. And Vera is not the only one. The sport, I've noticed this with the sport sack. Um, and I ha have a bunch of bags from them, which I might, I, I think I might will show in the video at some point. The lining is so sweet with the mushrooms. Very cute motif there. Clusters of mushrooms which um, are also on, in the main pattern. Mushrooms up top there. 
See that green green leaf there with the um, little bit of yellow in it? That's very nice. Again, here too, with a little bit more yellow to the leaf. So very nice. Uh, this is your basic bit by D. I only got this, I think, to boost up my order and get the free shipping on, with one and one of my orders. <laughs> you will not beat me, Vera. <laughs> Same thing with this. The checkbook cover in Bloom Boom. I mean, I love Bloom Boom. Love it. Um, I don't, I don't, I feel like I, I have a video on it um, from a while ago after it first came out. It, it just, it feels me, I have this nostalgic reaction to it because it reminds me of slip covers they used to put on big clunky deck chairs. Deck chairs back in the day, like in the 70s, used to be different. They were, they seemed to be constructed out of these heavy wooden frames that were usually like painted or stained dark brown and then, or like a rust kind of color. And then they had these fluffy cushions front back and seat cushions that were co covered in like this coated fabric um, and it, they always seem to have these really big loud floral prints very crammed full just like this pattern I mean this pattern reminds me of those deck chairs so much and so that just sort of takes me back to the Jersey Shore and Long Beach Island where it's been summers and so that, I have a real strong reaction to this pattern and love it. Um, I love the yellow flowers most of all. There are two yellow flowers in this that I really just am crazy about. Did not get hardly any yellow on this, but I'm just relieved I didn't get a big beige flower. This is one of the flowers that I do like in the pattern. Um, so I was okay with that. And, you know, all the little, there's all the little plant detail stuff in between the, the big flowers. That's also very interesting. On the inside, same thing. I mean, this was another one of the flowers I also like. I have it on something else. I think a, a laptop organizer or sleeve or whatever that thing is called. Um, so I'm pleased with it. Yeah. Again, got, got me free shipping. I mean, you're going to pay about this. I can't remember how much this was. Maybe $9. I would imagine shipping is probably comparable. So I might as well get something for that $9. Um, this is not from the online outlet sale, but I did mention this in my recent video about Dreamer Paisley, where I showed the regular ditty bag that I had found on the um, paper store website. And so I just thought I would hold it up because I did order, I was talking about how I was going to order the um, pocket ditty bag in this pattern and so I just thought I'd show them together so people who are not familiar with either of these items or one of these items can just see how they differ. So this has a sort of a rounder, round base. Again, sorry, I don't have my tape measure. I forgot to get it out, but you can see quite a difference in height. Also, this one feels stiffer. Now, I'm not sure exactly why that is maybe it's because of the in the pockets on this i don't i don't know if there's more to it construction wise there's more to it here that's giving it stiffness but this this bag they're both lined with plastic so that that's nice a nice feature um this one's got sort of a narrower rectangular base i don't know if you can see but there's one behind me way back in the back there in plum pansy i have um dog leashes and poop bags and stuff just thrown in there for when I walk pixie and it just stands upright it's great and this is you know I'm feeling like this is the same thing this bag this kind of ditty bag has a lot of good structure on its own and that's nice I like that and that it's not collapsing in on itself and so on one side it has um two slip pockets me <laughs> Might be stuff about the friends, about friends group that I want to be admins on. Um, but they feel sturdy, you know, like there's they're, they're more than one layer of fabric. There's more than one layer of fabric here going on in these pockets. The, um, so that, that it's giving it some structure. And there's like a big piece, rib, not um, like an edging, like a, a 
up here, the fabric, like when you sew like a hem, like kind of fold it over, so it's really got structure. Then on the inside, in addition to that plastic lining, which I'm sure is giving some structure, there's a zipper pocket. Oh, I have to be careful how I'm sitting, sorry. Uh, so you can see it in there. Um, it almost goes down almost all the way. I haven't used that for anything, but nice feature. So I was thinking about using this in, in a bag. I have, you know, some vintage Vera totes that um, don't have, they only have the toggle or button closure up top, button and loop or toggle and loop. They don't have a top zip. Um, some real vintage ones and then some fabric, uh, some factory outlet store uh, Vera totes that, that before they put the top zipper in. So I was thinking this might be a good thing to put um, in you know, my wallet or anything else I don't want people to be easily able to lift out of my bag if I stick their arm in and then you know it does have that drawstring thing so I could close it but then you know maybe easily stick my open it to stick my hand in you know so uh, again love this pattern uh, again just so, so very pleased with it again And I do have the other video. I'll try to link it. Uh, hopefully, I'll remember to do that <laughs> when I put, when I create the blurb or whatever. Okay, so that was a little sidebar. That was not from the online outlet sale. Sorry. Now back to the online outlet sale, and I'm sorry. This is a longer video because I'm chatty and rambly, and I ordered a lot. Um, this is my second one of these. I just did the first video on this. This, is, this color is cardinal red. It's performance twill, and the bag is the multi-strap, the small multi-strap tote bag. This red is so gorge. I mean, it just is. It's a perfect red. It's not too orange. It's got blue in there. Um, when I say that, I don't mean that it's going to look blue. But if you know anything about color mixing, um, when you mix paints, this is a red that has some blue in it. Uh, it is not an orangey red and and so it, it's just gorgeous that's my preference for red is a red with blue in it it's perfect i mean it's perfect it's almost like a sort of reminds me of like a valentino red um, but even maybe a little bit bluer than valentino's red the designer the italian designer valentino people are familiar he had a he has a red that is like it's Valentino red. It's a classic red. Um, anyway, so just just beautiful. Halston was another designer who used red well. Um, just gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm not crazy about this lining. It's not the same lining as on my olive leaf one. As by same, I don't mean color scheme. I mean the pattern. This I think this is an older pattern. This lining pattern, we've seen, seen this. It's been around in the performance tool for a while. Um, but you know, it works nice with the, with the red and it's light in color. So that's nice when you open your bag. It's not a big black, it doesn't feel like a big black hole. And this does come with the adjustable strap, just like the other one. Well, just so pleased, so pleased with these bags. Um, I do I have others to show, I mean like, I have other things to talk about with this bag. <laughs> another pattern for another time. Then I got this uh, Bonjour Belle. Uh, this is just a small Vera tote, and it's the velvet one. It's not. I don't. I know they did a regular size Vera tote with an all-over pattern on it. Um, the only thing I liked about that pattern was the roses. The roses were just gorgeous and sort of luscious but the the rest of it uh, i'm not you know i'm not that's not a cartoon that i'm really all that familiar with um so i'm more the old i'm more i'm old <laughs> but i'm more of the old school audience or old school disney cartoons so but i have a hard time resisting the velvet and i do like all alternate stitch patterns quilting stitch patterns and so when I saw this I was really pleased with it but 
still felt like I was trying to exercise some self-control and okay, well, I'm not gonna get it because it's not really, I don't really have a strong pull towards this particular um, cartoon, you know, anim movie, animated movie, Disney movie, so. But you can see there are roses worked in there. Also, I might add, I don't, I know they call this velvet, but to me, this isn't like a true velvet. I don't know what this is. Um, but it doesn't feel like a true velvet to me. But I do like the deep blue color. So <laughs> reminds me of that David Lynch movie, Isabella Rossellini. Uh, blue velvet. There is something about navy blue velvet that's very... Well, all, navy blue is an elegant color. I'm always saying that. Um, and like when you look at, historically, like when you look at paintings, um, it's a color that is often used for Mary and her dress, her, her clothing. Um, it's definitely a regal, elegant color. And it's flattering for most complexions. Um, so I do like the color here. Um, and, and I do like that stitching, that, that you can see the rose, the roses in there. And then I also fell in love with the lining. Um, it's rare that a lining will drive my purchase, but I feel like kind of like that was what was part of what was happening here, contributing to it is this lining. Just luscious with this red. It's up like a perfect deep pink, you know, almost like azalea kind of color. I mean, I think they're roses. And it's cute. There's one, I mean, I, I haven't looked too closely at it, but I did look at, uh, uh, long enough to notice the, the rose there. There we go. That's looking at itself in the mirror. <laughs> That's cute. This, as I, I, I said in, in one of the groups that I'm in, it might have been an insider's group, the Beer Bradley insider's group. Um, this should have been an exterior pattern on a tote. That's, that's what I would have liked to have seen. God, it would have been all over that, you know, regardless of whether I had any attachment to the movie or anything. All over it. This is your basic Vera Tota. All the features are the same. Hidden, hidden slip pocket, you know, same pocket configuration here and the six slip pockets inside. Same dimensions, measurements as a regular Vera Tota. Then in this online outlet sale, they had Harry Potter stuff, not just earlier patterns, but also some of the more recent patterns, including Forbidden Forest, and a couple of things in the one that came out after that, um, which I thought was very cute, but I don't feel like I know enough about the stories and the, the various characters to buy that stuff. It would be kind of meaningless, the characters are meaningless to me, so I just felt like, okay, let me try to rein myself in. <laughs> very uncharacteristically. Um, but I, I do love Forbidden Forest, and I did know enough about Harry Potter to, you know, know some of the, what's going on here with the, the characters here, and I do have a video on that. I guess I can I can put, try to put a link to that, and I, I, my memory serves me right. That might be a video where my dogs were being a little crazy, so, you know, for all the people who say, oh, your dogs are too distracting, move along. I, I don't, you know, they're my life and they're going to be in my videos when I want them in my videos. <laughs> um, what is amazing to me is that I seem to have won this round of the battle that I'm having with Vera Bradley when I order stuff about pattern placement. <laughs> because as people who watch that other video know, I hate the spider. I understand the spider is a character. I understand. I get it. I get it. I know. I do not like spiders on my bags. Oh my God, a lot of dings today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not usually, so I don't usually have a lot of people dinging me. <laughs> I live a quiet life. Um, there is not one spider anywhere on this thing, and I cannot tell you how overjoyed I am. <laughs> Finally, something worked out for me with pattern placement, and I, I, I just got you know a lot of the, um, yeah, the the, the 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 characters, the figures that I like, you know, not always where I would have wanted them to be. For example, I love the wrap, but it's on the back. 
But anyway, you know, just so pleased, completely pleased, so excited. And of course it has that great lining. This lining also should have been a bag. It should have been a beer tote. I don't know why they're not calling me, but you could. <laughs> so then because of Hedgehog, and this was a good price, and I'm afraid of things wearing out, um, and I'm not buying as many of them, contrary to what it might look like. <laughs> there are a number of the newer patterns I'm not really buying a lot of. Um, Sierra Floral, I have one, maybe two things in it. Uh, sunlight, sunlight Garden Sage, one, maybe two things in it, even though I do like that pattern. Um, the last two Paisley base patterns did nothing for me. Uh, People remember right what was that rose rose floral rosa floral or something did nothing for me anything with the medallion pat the medallion patterns they're coming out with not does nothing for me i can't, can't stand them really don't like any of the plaid patterns i see the appeal of patriotic plaid is that what it's called the red white and blue one that's good for summer but again I'm, doesn't tempt me at all none of the plaid patterns ever tempt me and the only reason i have that um that Scotty dog thing is because of the applique. I mean, there's a version of that without the applique, it's just the plaid. No, no interest. <laughs> so there's been a lot that I really haven't been spending money on. So the, the things that I do like, I'm, I'm concerned about how this cotton, this recycled cotton is gonna wear. And so I am getting duplicates sometimes when, the, when they're cheap um, as backup of things I really like. And Hedgehog, this Hedgehog Wild has grown on me enough that I just, I, I wanna make sure I have a backup. Um, I just think it's adorable. And I love this blue, ice, kind of ice blue color. It's beautiful. And again, the overall color scheme here with those, so you've got, you know, again, it's, it's, it's very cool. The whole thing is very cool, but there are these touches these warm touches in there of yellows and pinks that warm it up along with the brown of the hedgehogs, the brown and tan colors in the hedgehog. And these little floral, you know, groupings are very nice. You know, they have nice movement, some of them, especially things like this that sort of, you know, climb upwards Move the, they move the eye up in the pattern, which is nice. A lot of these sprays, you know, even this, they kind of spray up and they move the eye up throughout the pattern, which is nice. So I think this is very pretty and I think it reminds me, part of the reason I like it is because it reminds me of um, Merry Mischief, which has, to me, has a good retro kind of vintage feel. Um, these sort of small clusters of characters with a little bit of foliage, whether it's evergreen pine needles, you know, and pine cones for Christmas or winter, whatever, or whether it's, you know, something like this, which is more spring-like. And so, just a, a lining again. Very pretty. Never thought mushrooms could be so pretty. <laughs> so um, that was that. And last but not least, um, and I did get, like I said, I did get the throw blanket in Hedgehog Wild. Again, just love the, the colors, the, the little touches, the little touches of the, the rose color in there with uh, contrasting with the coolness. Just really, it was hard for me to resist. It's very delicate, very feminine. And yet the pattern is sort of cute, so it's not overly like feminine and girly. So in a in my one of my recent videos, I made a I made a sort of a side that I liked lavender. I was talking about solid color performance tool that I liked. Uh, that they're I really hadn't gotten on board with the solid perform color performance tool uh, until recently when they did a couple of colors that I liked, including olive leaf, which I had shown, and then I mentioned lavender sky. And then I realized after that the color that really got me started paying attention more to the solid color performance tool was blue ore. And I do have that beer tote. Um, I think that's a gorgeous color. 
Anyway, so I do love lavender. It is coming out fairly accurately. It looks a little more vivid on the screen, I think, than it looks in person next to me. Um, it is a little bit stronger, deeper of a lavender color than I was hoping, but I knew that going in because I have had to order, and this is my beef with, with stuff, again, again with alignment and quality control. This is like the fourth one of these, maybe. Third or fourth one of these, at least the third maybe the fourth, that I have ordered. I'm returning the others. I returned all the others. I think I might have one that I need to return still in my pile. Uh, for a poor alignment of the pieces, and you, when there's no pattern, and there's these big quilting squares, you can notice it right away. And as a matter of fact, I think in the product shot for this very bag on the website, the, the product shot, the bag in the shot, this whole first panel is askew. And you can tell that by when you look at how the diamonds of the, the squares of the quilting relate to the horizontal seams. You know, it, it, that's where you can tell whether something is put, and the vertical. Whenever there's a seam, you know, you can look at how the, Quilt stitching relates to that, and you can see whether the fabric is put put down level and straight or whether it's askew. And it's got to be straight in a bag like this with no pattern to camouflage any kind of, you know, mismatching or, or stuff, crookedness. And so I was sending them all back, and I was getting really annoyed, and I finally gave up. But I, I really wanted something in this color because lavender is my mother's favorite color. So I have a fondness for lavender. Also... There is a, when I was a kid, I used to take out, from the library, you could take out records. <laughs> People remember what records are. And they had a couple of records of Vincent Price reading ghost stories. And of course, he has a beautiful voice, perfect for reading ghost stories. And one of the ghost stories was called A Lavender Evening Dress. And it just gave me chills and I loved it. And so I have this sort of sentimental tie to this color for various reasons. And I think it's also flattering. I think it flatters, well, pastel, light pastel, you know, pastel colors tend to flatter olive skin tones, which I have, I have an olive skin tone. But I think it probably, probably flatter everybody. Although I if you're very pale, maybe pastel colors might wash you out a little bit. I don't know. But I do think in general, pastel colors are very flattering. And so I, I just, I wanted it for this. My mother used to have this long uh, caftan like kind of nightgown it was this color so that's my memory of her wearing that uh, very flowy nylon so it was kind of silky feeling knit knit like nylon anyway so I finally got one decent alignment so I'm pleased again that uh, yeah familiar lining that's been used it's okay. You can buy it for the lining. And this is the same, you know, nothing new has been done to this latest version of the performance twill. Vera tote. This is the same. And they revamped it and it's that revamped version you can see. Pocket configuration, strap configuration is different now. For a while now it's been like that. So that was it. <laughs> Almost at 45 minutes. Right, not too bad. <laughs> so now, I keep telling myself it's not that bad. Anyway, I hope people found that a little enjoyable, and uh, I might try to shoot another video now, I'm not sure, uh, to load up another day. Uh, something new I was thinking of trying for my channel, so I might try to do that now while the light's still good. But anyway, um, thanks so much for watching, and hopefully see you next time on Vera Bradley Bag of the Day.